It's Monday. It's October 24th. And the word of the day is latibulate, which means to find a corner somewhere and hide in it. Used in a sentence, lots of us felt the need to latibulate recently, and then reality spent the last six years spamming the leg sweep as a corner trap like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> you got to block and then throw. You got to yeah, time right, it. Right, exactly. What we need is a word for when you feel like you need to block and then throw a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. If I die of heart disease while I'm latibulating, is that technically a fatality for the world? Oh, interesting. Sure. Interesting. As we think about that, I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Tim Ryan is coming to save us. <laughs> Donald Trump will finally get some competition in the hilariously inept celebrity-owned right-wing bigot-themed social media space. He will, and Liz Truss gets out after six weeks, just in time to satisfy the heartbeat rule. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, QED, less than a week. Ooh, ooh. Re ready for some scones and cheeky nandos? If what? by scones and cheeky nandos you mean giving and receiving anal sex from March and Andy Wilson, respectively, <laughs> then yes. So, yes. I feel like you hosting the Saturday Night Comedy Dinner might not go how the organizers are hoping. Mm -mm. <laughs> In our lead story tonight, in... Trust Falls news. <laughs> Our old-timey mother country is not having a great time right now. It's been pretty much all downhill for the UK since about, I don't know, like 1776 or so. Yeah, about then. <laughs> we kicked them out of America, then they kicked themselves out of the European Union, then their queen died... And, well, that doesn't matter at all, so that was a nice little breather in there. How but, dare you? I am still warning, okay. sir! But now it's back to the chaos with their conservative-led government having a meltdown at the same time as their economy. And then on Thursday, Liz Truss resigned from her post after six weeks as prime minister. In six weeks, she showed up, she killed the queen, she ruined the economy, <laughs> and then she lit a goddamn cigarette and flicked it into the gasoline as she walked away from 10 Downing Street in slow motion. And now, the Tories are trying to pick the next PM and settle down the country. Of course, one of the front runners is Boris Johnson. Yes. So, so they can return to the normalcy of Boris Johnson, maybe. Okay. At this point, British political realities sound like an ever more desperate QAnon poster online, right? Yeah. If JFK Jr. takes over next, I will be unsurprised. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So look, I I'm not saying that Truss wasn't bad at her job. She was spectacularly, unfathomably, historically bad at her job. But at the same time, the job right now is... Make Brexit not have been a terrible idea, right? So, like, I feel <laughs> yeah, that the best right. the country can hope for is failing better. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird bar. So, here's the sequence of events for True Liz. She took office on September 6th and immediately started working on a plan to make about 45 billion pounds worth of unfunded tax cuts. Turns out that was not great for the economy. And pretty much immediately, the British pound became a Dogecoin. At QED, we're basically billionaires. Right? I mean, there is an upside. Like, I might buy Manchester United if I find enough money in the couch. <laughs> I don't know. I might buy Cristiano Ronaldo. Well, we'll see. Yeah, if you're looking for me at QED, I'll be the one walking around the lobby in decent proposaling people with Chuck E. Cheese tokens. So. <laughs> Yeah, God, they, their inflation rate is damn near cosmological at this point. So. It's rough, and we're saying that as Americans. So... The tax idea went very badly, and Trust decided to fire her treasury chief, Quasi Quarteng, last week and replaced him with Jeremy Hunt. And Hunt just completely canceled all her plans, including the tax cuts and her promise to put a two-year cap on domestic energy bills, which means her ideas got canceled in both liberal and conservative directions yep. by a Tory. Just a blanket like... No, and a swat on the nose with a newspaper. Like, all your stuff, just no. Doesn't matter why. I feel like you do a touch base before you appoint someone treasury chief, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or prime minister, for that matter, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so with all that as context, Liz Truss had to deal with the prime minister's questions on Wednesday. That's a meeting that happens every week during which the sitting PM has to take questions from members of parliament. And the ones that don't like you, which was almost everyone for Liz Truss last week, 
they ask a series of wonderfully passive aggressive questions that often refer to the PM in the third person, even though they're talking right to you. Questions from last week included, what would the PM say the PM does here? Approximately? <laughs> the PM should resign, question mark. And we also got a rare zinger from Labor Party leader Keir Starmer, who said, a book is being written about the prime minister's time in office. I guess you get to do like a little preamble to your joke. You yeah. get to do a zinger at the end. Nice. He continued, apparently it's going to be out by Christmas. Is that the release date or the title? <laughs> Zing, right? <laughs> yeah, and it was out by Halloween before yeah, Halloween. Halloween. And it was the title. And regardless of your answer to any of those questions, everyone starts yelling, rabble, 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 no matter what you say. The whole thing is delightful, and I want us to have exactly that here in the U.S. Oh, yeah, if for no reason but how bad Republican attempts at humor are. Sure, sure. I mean, to be fair, the U.S. does basically have the House of Lords. They're just, you know, in power and unchecked and not nearly as young and spry as Andrew Lloyd Webber is. But yeah, yeah. and uh, also worth noting, Liz Truss got done with that Q&A session and immediately fired another cabinet member, Home Secretary Suella Braverman, for the cause of literally but her emails. And as it turns out, the second cabinet firing in six weeks did not inspire extra confidence like Truss was hoping. Hmm. And neither did the running joke by the Daily Star. This is beautiful. They posted a video last week asking, will Liz Truss outlast this lettuce? They bought a head of lettuce, presumably using, I don't know, an entire shopping cart of cash in British pounds. <laughs> and they had a link to a live lettuce cam where you could follow the wilting race. I could not find the betting odds for Truss v. Lettuce the night before the resignation, but the payout for Truss being gone before the end of the year that night implied a probability of about 70% that she would be gone before the end of the year. That 70% number was the same number given by our intrepid UK correspondent, Michael Marshall, except he was talking about trust being gone before QED. Yes. And uh, yeah, Marsh took the under and he nailed it. Hours later, hours later after me talking with Marsh about this, she quit the show. Yeah. Uh, sure, but it's easy for Marsh to point and laugh now, but let's see how he does when Britain runs out of people who haven't been prime minister and it's his turn. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's coming up. Okay, so not not for nothing, guys, but if the British economy and political situation gets much worse, we could totally colonize them. Oh, for sure. Right, like I'm not saying it would be morally <laughs> right, but it would be fucking hilarious. Yeah, I want absolutely. Commit to the bit, guys. So the political situation in the UK... It's a little crazy right now, but I'm still jealous for certain things. I want a parliament like the main critique of that parliamentary system is legislative gridlock. But we have legislative angina in the U.S. And we've had it for years now. <laughs> Meanwhile, a parliamentary system has minority party representation that actually matters. And there's incentive to build coalitions to get things done. Uh, of course, we also need ranked choice voting to make parliament actually representative. So it doesn't backfire. But most importantly, I want the passive-aggressive Q&A and the rabble mob. I would buy <laughs> ringside seats for that. I would get season tickets every year to go to that, wherever it was. We could have jobs as political consultants. There's a lot of, you know. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Good point. And in master debater news, if you've been listening to The Skeptocrat for a while, you know that from time to time I enjoy poking fun at senatorial candidate Tim Ryan, partially because he ended his presidential bid by clinging to Elizabeth Warren's podium and yelling, I'm Liz Warren, you have to vote for me now. And partially because he looks like you chose the starting character in a FromSoft game called Office Souls. I can say with unreserved enthusiasm that last week he beat the ever loving shit out of J.D. Vance in a debate. And I loved every single second of it. He really did. Somebody gave Tim Ryan an amazing psych up speech right before this debate. It felt like, I don't know, like some high school buddy went up to him and was like, hey, you remember on JV football and we called you Shimmy Timmy? You remember that? You, you got to go full Shimmy Timmy, man. He's like, I don't want to go Shimmy Timmy. No, you got to go Shimmy Timmy. And Ryan did it. He did whatever the fuck that meant as it applied to a debate somehow. <laughs> Shimmy Timmy 
crushed it at this. He debate. did. Yeah, he did. Now, to be fair, though, he went into that debate with a lot of unfair advantages over his opponent. Like, for example, only one of them got to be debating J.D. Vance. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> now, before we get to specifics, I want to point out that this victory was not a sure thing. Right. As listeners to our sister show, The Scathing Atheist, will already know, Senator Raphael Warnock barely managed to hold his own against Herschel Walker. In spite of Walker pulling an easy bake oven out of his pocket to prove he was a Michelin chef. <laughs> and all over the country, Democratic candidates are playing it safe, trying to win the votes of so-called moderates by not being too aggressively liberal. And if you're like me, you've spent the last, I don't know, God knows how many years wishing that someone would just speak plainly and honestly about the problems in this country and the monsters that caused them. And well... Tim Ryan's your guy. He did that yeah, during yeah. that debate. Apparently it's working. In places like Ohio, I guess we just need a mediocre guy being like, this guy fucking sucks. Like, I'm mad, but like, he sucks. Vote for me. And it's working. I don't know. Maybe we stop looking for brilliant orators with charisma and intelligence. Just have some guy from like the middle school lunchroom. Whatever <laughs> works. Just start in chance. This guy sucks. I don't know. It works. I, t I know you're not specifically talking about John Fetterman when you say all that, but everyone is thinking of John Fetterman when you say all yep. that. I love John yeah. Fetterman. <laughs> I know, now, me too. Let's start with the very obvious you're on tape moment. Oh. So Ryan in the debate starts talking about how serious the office is and mentions that Vance endorsed Alex Jones, saying that he was more credible than Rachel Maddow, to which Vance replied, quote, that's totally a lie. I never said that. Huh. To which Ryan replied, quote, and I love this, you're on tape, man. It'll be like 30 minutes and we're all going to know you're lying. End quote. Uh, and no, it did not take 30 nope. minutes for people to find that tweet uh, saying that Alex Jones is a more reputable source of information than MSNBC host Rachel Maddow. So, yeah. Yeah. And just based on net worth, she's like a billion dollars more reputable, right? Like, I know that's not the best metric, but that's a start. It's something. Yeah. But that wasn't the only moment. Ryan also took Vance to task on the national abortion ban, his support of white replacement theory, and his I'm with stupid political tour with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Everything I wanted Tim Ryan to say to Jim Vance, he said on that stage. Well, almost everything. Yeah, okay, yeah, but to be fair, even Heath and I bleep out the other thing you wanted him to That's say. Fair. So yep, that say. That's fair, yeah, that is fair. But my friends, I saved the best for last. And I mentioned this in passing on Scathing Atheist, but... When Ryan took Vance to task for his reversal on Trump, I, Eli Bosnick, whom stem gearing up for our fourth Say Mean Shit for Charity Marathon, was like, damn, Tim Ryan, you didn't have to do him like that. <laughs> so here's the quote. And forgive me, it's a little bit long, but I just it's so beautiful. Ryan said, quote, you were calling Trump America's Hitler. Then you kissed his ass. And then he endorsed you. And you said he's the greatest president of all time. Mitch McConnell gave you $40 million to prop up your campaign. Peter Thiel gave you $15 million. That's $55 million, JD. What do you think they want for that? They want your loyalty. And you prove that you'll kiss their ass too. And look, it's nothing personal. I'm just telling you. Like, I've been in this business. It's tough business. If you think you're going to help Ohio, you're not. If you can't even stand up for yourself, how are you going to stand up for the people of this state? Whoa. End quote. This guy sucks. This guy <laughs> sucks. Ohio. This guy sucks. Again, whatever works, and that's working. Yeah, what's high in the middle and round on both ends? J.D. Vance's asshole after that line. <laughs> wow. Exactly. And speaking of things J.D. Vance is going to have to work through in therapy, let's pause for a word from our sponsor, <laughs> BetterHelp. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, as the midterms grow ever closer, it's totally normal to be, shall we say, on edge. Ah, we lost a point in Colorado. So, so you're jinxing it by saying that you have to stand on one foot now. Fine, fine. No, I, I'm on one foot. I'm on one foot. But there are healthy and unhealthy ways to be affected by news in the world. And if you're having a hard time, you know, dealing, therapy can actually help. Wait, therapy can help me with the news? 
Well, maybe not with the news, but having an impartial trained professional to talk to can help you be a better problem solver. And they can help talk you through what might not be healthy emotions. Why are both of your feet on the ground? Montgomery County is doing a phone poll as we speak. The Eli distracted me just now. And if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists any time. Since BetterHelp became a sponsor, we've had literally dozens of listeners reach out to tell us that BetterHelp is how they found their therapist, and we couldn't be more proud to work with them. Are you refreshing 538? I am always refreshing 538, Heath. Okay, just hit it again. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. BetterHelp. Because you might not be able to move poles on 538 with your mind. You don't know. And we're back. Next up in headlines in Lone Wolf News, but Lone like something borrowed, not solitude. Nice. Republicans <laughs> thank you, have decided that standing between voters and their money is a winning political issue going into the midterms, and they were given a boost on that front when an appeals court temporarily blocked Biden's student loan forgiveness program. Of course, this plan has been stoking Republican ire since Biden announced it in August with minority leader and bastard son of Morla, the ancient one, Mitch McConnell, dubbing it a slap in the face. So let's just picture slapping Mitch McConnell in the face for a second. <laughs> it's going to take a while to get your hand back out. Yeah, but it's right. Worth exactly. It. Exactly. Yeah. But it'd be worth it. Anyway, uh, he dubbed it a slap in the face to those who already paid off their student loans. You know, it's like... um. It's like how we don't look for a cure for cancer because of how rude that would be to people who already beat cancer like yes. that. Yes. Anyway, since the program's announcement, several conservative groups and attorneys general have challenged it in court. And mostly that's gone bad for them. But it looks like one of them finally managed to find something that would stick to the wall for at least a minute. Yeah. At this point, the Republicans are just trying out various TikTok trends and they're on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me tell you something. Let me tell yeah. you something. <laughs> wait, I, I have to tie my shoe. We can't relieve any debt until I'm done. Tying my <laughs> so, shh. Oh, no, shoe. I should note, by the way, that this comes days after Supreme Court hyperconservative and literal handmade Amy Coney Barrett dismissed a challenge to the program from the Wisconsin-based Brown County Taxpayers Association, uh, though she did them the favor of doing so without comment. And about an hour after that news broke, the efforts received another blow when U.S. District Judge Henry Autry dismissed another challenge to the program by Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and South Carolina. Autry said that while the states raised, quote, important and significant challenges to the debt relief plan, end quote, they can't show how they'd be harmed by it. So how the fuck could they have standing? Well, the six attorneys general that brought that case appealed, and it was that appeal that led to the program being temporarily blocked. Yeah, I mean, they were basically playing whack a program until they hit a 14 year old Trump appointee who won his federal judgeship in a CPAC raffle. So, right. yeah, no. Yeah, congrats. exactly. No, that's how it works. Feels like now. Amy Coney Barrett just got confused by Brown County and ruled against them. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be clear, there are reasonable arguments against Biden's program. Uh, they're not the ones that these attorneys general are using, but a lot of people have pointed out that of all the ways that one could spend a bunch of money to relieve the financial burden on working Americans, targeting student loan debt disproportionately advantages people who are higher income and white. And that's that's true, right? Like the program caps at one hundred and twenty five thousand a year for individuals and a quarter of a million dollars for households. But still, white, upper class and middle class kids are far more likely to take on student loan debt than less affluent people and minorities. Um, of course, those arguments ignore the fact that people defaulting on student loan debt isn't just bad for the people defaulting. Right. This, this isn't just about putting money in those people's pockets. It's also an economic bailout. Student loan debts were paused due to COVID for quite a while. A bunch of people are set to have to start suddenly making those payments again in January. And the economy's not in the kind of shape where you suddenly want to burden a fuck ton of people with another large monthly expense. So in addition to helping those individuals, the program is also trying to help ease that shock to the larger economy. And interestingly enough, these very same states had no fucking issue at all when the people getting bailed out of situations like this for the sake of the economy weren't working class Americans. Right. It's really, really important to note that we do economic stimulus all the time. Yes. All the time. Right. The reason Republicans hate this is because this is one of the very, very few times the stimulus isn't going to go directly to them and their lobbyists. Yeah. Fuck. The other team's doing demand side economics again. And that actually makes sense with that. Uh, we left the oven on. 
It's time out. <laughs> it's I gotta go back. Interference. Oh, twisted my ankle. So, now, the other argument against the program, of course, is its cost, because cost is super duper important when the federal government is doing something other than exploding brown people, right? So, the, the, the number 400 billion gets thrown around a lot, although the qualifier over the next 30 years kind of gets mumbled inaudibly if it's said at all. Uh, that's the Congressional Budget Office's estimate of the cost. And the argument from the six red states behind this lawsuit is that they should have standing because that debt is being transferred from borrowers to taxpayers, and that's going to harm them. Um, that would be a lot more convincing if any of the states involved actually paid more in federal taxes than they got back. <laughs> yeah, red states just existing in general is a government subsidy paid by mostly New York and California. Right. That's yeah. what's happening. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, they're also arguing that Biden doesn't have the legal authority to do this at all, which is fucking silly because there's a law that explicitly gives the president the power to do exactly this in times of national crisis. So they've had to resort to arguing with straight faces, presumably, that COVID doesn't count as a national crisis. All right. All right. Hear me out. If a tree falls in the forest and lands on more than a million Americans that I don't care about, does it make a sound? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's the argument. Now, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals issued the stay only a couple of days after people started applying for the loan cancellations. And the Biden administration has been super clear that everybody needs to keep doing that. Right. The stay blocks them from actually canceling debt, but they can still process applications. And I don't think they were actually going to clear any debt until the middle of next month anyway. So by all means, Fill out the form, super painless, and remember on election day where these motherfuckers are putting their efforts. Yeah, and if you don't have any debt, but you would like a piece of the pie next time something like this comes around, the Eli Bosnick and Heath Enright University slash bank has very okay. reasonable interest <laughs> rates slash classes for you to enjoy. <laughs> Give us a call. And in yay bigot news, Kanye West <laughs> is either a Manchurian candidate for someone or... He's just a terrible person. Yeah. I'm going to guess it's the second thing because the first one sounds like something Kanye West would say about Jewish Illuminati overlords. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either way, he's not well. Obviously, supporting Donald Trump was an early clue about that and wearing tiny little baby slippers to a wedding in 2018 was another clue. Sure. And of course, there was a bunch of wildly abusive behavior toward his ex-wife, Kim Kardashian. And regardless of the very understandable rage and confusion about Pete Davidson. I get it. It's still not okay. <laughs> well, it got even worse when he spent most of October hurling anti-Semitic slurs on social media, which led to his account getting suspended by Instagram and Twitter. And a great response to that is, you know, stop being a bigot. That would work. Kanye's response was to buy an entire social media platform where he can say Jewish slur words to his heart's content. That's right. Kanye West is going to buy Parlor. Yes, and in that one moment, everyone on Parlor got a black sum of their best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry if I'm getting this information to you too late, Kanye, but um, you're allowed to type as many slurs as you want on like Microsoft Word, right? You might confuse Clippy or whatever, but like, the, and the, the key is that your desktop probably has about the same number of daily views as anything on Parler. <laughs> so it just seems like you're spending your money on nothing at this point. <laughs> All right. So just in case anyone missed it, Kanye's anti-Semitic tirade included several claims about a global Jewish conspiracy against him personally and the argument that he actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are technically Jewish and... <laughs> Also, the exact words, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people, capitalized. Uh, of course, it's def con, not death con, and level three, that's medium. But mm -hmm. I missed the beginning of that tweet when I first read about it, and I feel like that's the craziest part somehow. Like, I'm kind of tired right now, but tomorrow, first thing tomorrow, first thing, I'm hating Jewish people. Alexa, <laughs> set an alarm for death level medium on Jewish people at 8 a.m. What has happened? <laughs> like, against all odds, that made it worse, right? Uh, I mean, it does imply that one needs their full energy to holocaust the Jews, which is a compliment to the Jews. I I <laughs> so, okay, I have a theory here. I think it was a trap. He was trying to, like, like he figured the Jewish Illuminati would realize that they only had a few hours before he went death con on them. You know, so they had to make their move in that uh, like that night. So he like he stayed up all night, Kevin McAllistering his house or something. Sure, the Jews were a coming. 
<laughs> right. slips on his own marbles. Oh no! Yeah. So, <laughs> I shouldn't have worn these tiny slippers. It's, <laughs> it's either that, what Noah said, or he was tired enough to procrastinate on his race war idea, but not so tired that he didn't write a tweet about that absurd thought before he went to bed. And that's the important thing, I guess. Kanye needs a free speech platform that lets you announce your eventual race war when you get to it, when you get around to it, like that novel you've been working on. That's what America's all about. And Parler CEO George Farmer agrees. Side note, George Farmer is the husband of Candace Owens. Yep. They got married at the Donald Trump Vineyard in Virginia. Yeah, the catering was by McDonald's. Oh, such a lovely <laughs> ceremony. I'm so glad we went. You want the steak or the filet of fish? Yeah. <laughs> so after hammering out the preliminary agreement with Kanye, Farmer made the big announcement saying, quote, this deal will change the world and change the way the world thinks about free speech. Ye's acquiring of Parler will strengthen our ability to create an uncancelable ecosystem. Jesus. And and then he emailed all of Parler's VIPs to tell them the good news, but he's an idiot, so he CC'd <laughs> instead of BCC'd. <laughs> And yep. then the press got a hold of like that email and had a field day call at various senators and shit going, hey, why are you on the uh, bigot site's preferred mailing list? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hilarious. So, yeah, none of that matters because, you know, uncancelable and nobody cares are both happening at the same time. Yep. Yep. Just for context, in terms of market share in the social media space, Yelp comes in at number 10 with about 1%. Parlor ranked at number unfindable with <laughs> yeah. drastically less than that. People would rather whine about their server at TGI Fridays than post anything on Parlor. And that's because most of the bigots on the internet, they can't be edgy and combative when they're on a bigots only platform. Like right. they say a slur and everyone's like, yeah, slur. Right. Totally. Totally. All right. Anyway, I'm going to go jerk off in my mom's basement again while making hard eye contact with her cat. This is fun. We have fun lives. But most importantly, and this needs to be repeated over and over, canceling is free speech. Yes. You ignorant pieces of shit. That's also free speech. This does nothing. It's not even also, right, because as you're pointing out, it's not about their ability to say it, right? What they want is the ability to say it to you. Yep. <laughs> right. That's what they want protected. <sighs> the Republican platform in a nutshell. And in two wings and a thigh quill news, I gotta admit, things are starting to feel normal again. Not politics, of course, or like everyday life. COVID cases are still astronomically higher than any of us thought they'd be before we went back to quote unquote normal. I mean, Russia's still conducting an illegal war against Ukraine and looks ever more ready for nuclear war to save face. The housing market's insanely Eli? broken. Eli, Sorry, story. right? Just, but, but one thing has returned to normal and that is that the cdc has once again had to start issuing warnings to gen z about doing stupid stuff they find in their bathroom and this month <laughs> they're cooking their chicken with nyquil everybody Get Are ready. They, yeah. <laughs> okay just drink the nyquil and cook the chicken with a tide pod fuck that would be so much better <laughs> See, this is the dark underbelly of affordable health insurance the Republicans tried to warn us about, guys. <laughs> yeah. So this news came to us from the FDA itself, which felt the need to issue an official warning about the practice, which went viral on TikTok, saying, quote, the challenge sounds silly and unappetizing, and it is, but it could also be very unsafe. Boiling a medication can make it much more concentrated and change its properties in other ways. Even if you don't eat the chicken, inhaling the medication's vapors while cooking could cause high levels of the drugs to enter your body. It could also hurt your lungs. Put simply, someone could take a dangerously high amount of the cough and cold medicine without even realizing it. End quote. Which leads at least this podcaster to ask... Does NyQuil chicken get you high? Because they're talking about it like it gets you high, right? Guy? Am I right? Yeah. And they had to put out an announcement about this. The FDA was like, okay, didn't think we'd have to explain this, but don't freebase the NyQuil. Great. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course, NyQuil chicken gets you high. I actually, I had a whole bit here about which over-the-counter drugs get you how high at what amounts, but Andrew kept deleting it and billing the company for bulk orders at Tums, which wasn't even on my fucking list, so yeah. I, okay. I'm going to leave that <laughs> out. Neither of those answers was no. 
Look at the spreadsheet, man. (laughs) Well, either way, I know a moral panic when I see one. And so, in the tradition of our parents before us, as a new parent myself, I will be taking this very seriously. (laughs) Just like my parents did with Jankum and razors and Halloween candy. So, gentlemen, while I get a proper Karen haircut at Budget Cuts, let's put 10 seconds on the clock for catchphrases for our new anti-NyQuil chicken public service announcement. Go. Okay. Um... Some roads aren't meant to be crossed. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Uh, NyQuil chicken. Party foul. <laughs> oh, good. that's memorable. Yeah. Uh, how about this? Uh, this is your brain on nugs. <laughs> Henny questions. Henny questions. Oh, excellent. Well done, sir. And finally tonight. In Larval Cinematic Universe news, <laughs> I'm not usually a fan of stealing a million dollars by posing as a cryptocurrency multimillionaire, uh, but I make an exception <laughs> when you're stealing that million dollars from professional online harassment coordinator Theodore Beale, a.k.a. Vox Day. This is beautiful. I so, so I was good. so happy when I saw this story. And I make an even bigger exception if the million dollars you steal was crowdfunded from your fans to make a movie about an anti-woke superhero named Rebel that wears a Confederate battle flag outfit yikes oh, first we're bunching nazis now we're robbing nazis mm-hmm. i don't have a point i just wanted to list the things i like <laughs> that are happening <laughs> okay no that's a, okay alex jones ugly crying right now just yeah. odds are I, yeah. I almost guarantee he's ugly some good stuff's happening yeah no no close on the good news so yeah so the film that wasn't was to be called rebels run and it was based on a character in a comic published by Beale. Now, unfortunately, the trailer is no longer available online because the Daily Beast described it. And apparently I'm missing out on a low budget concept footage piece of shitlord superheroes fighting off the global police force that us libs are going to send to hunt down conservative bloggers. And I really need to fucking see That's that. That's amazing. <laughs> right now, as terrible and stupid as that sounds, it managed to raise nine hundred and forty one thousand dollars from terrible, stupid people through a years long crowdfunding campaign. Of course, even these idiots recognize that's not enough to make a superhero movie, and that's where the fake crypto millionaire comes in. You know what this doomed venture largely inhabited by white supremacists needs? Another doomed venture largely inhabited (laughs) by white (laughs) supremacists. We need to get into the crypto space. Yes, you do. That's a great cover story by whoever pulled this off. That's exactly who you'd expect to be funding Captain Murica Civil War about a confederate... (laughs) <laughs> superhero right, yeah. he's a fucking crypto bro good work no to secure the rest of the financing bill apparently went to a private investment firm called ohana capital financial uh, headed by a guy named james wolfgram or smisi new or vaca new depending on which indictment you read yes okay. that's real so According to Beale, Wolfgram offered to produce the movie under his Viral Films Media banner and supply $4 million in additional funding. Beale just needed to put the original million in escrow uh, through a company that allegedly turned out to be essentially Wolfgram's Venmo account. (laughs) 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 Or sorry, actually, according to the allegations, he actually (laughs) used that million to buy PPE from some Chinese manufacturer that he'd already ripped off before, and then he resold that. But regardless, it sure the fuck wasn't in escrow. (laughs) Okay. Okay. To be fair, though, if nobody involved in your venture knows what the fuck escrow means, (laughs) who's to say whether or not your money is there? (laughs) Okay. If you think escrow means put a million dollars where some guy says to put a million dollars and you're a neo-Nazi, uh, you know what? I'm good with victim blaming yeah. this one time. This right. one time, so, yeah. Yeah, so in, in case you're unfamiliar with the victim here, I should point out that Beale was one of the central figures in promoting the faux controversy Gamergate. Uh, he was also famously out-trolled by pounded in the butt by my own butt author Chuck Tingle. Uh, when Beale tried to delegitimize the Hugo Awards for having the audacity to recognize that black women can also write science fiction by uh, nominating Tingle. S- seriously, it's, it's just it's too long of a diversion to go into here, but it's worth looking up the story. We'll include it in the show notes. Uh, long story short, he's exactly the kind of guy that you want to see getting ripped off by a fake crypto millionaire, uh, as are the people who would crowdfund his bullshit. Yes. Also, another benefit of this story, whenever you talk about this story, it's like shaving a haircut for Roger Rabbit, but for Nazis. How so? Uh, All right, Heath, uh, let's demonstrate. Will you pretend to be a Nazi for me? Uh, Sure. I guess I don't really understand the point here. I'll I'll, I'll explain. All right, I'll I'll pretend. This story 
happened. Stealing's wrong. Why don't you believe in the law? See? Whoa. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I don't even know what happened. No, I'm impressed. Okay. I'm impressed. Good point. Of course, we learned about this when Beal posted a message to all the people whose money he lost, uh, explaining how easy it is apparently to con him out of 900 grand. In the message, he admits that the investors will probably never get their money back or see their terrible movie. Though, to be honest, I feel like they might still be able to sue Beal for it, right? Because... And their fault that he deposited it all at real bank slash and I mean it dot X, Y, Z or whatever. <laughs> but Beal offers both his supporters and detractors a glimmer of hope at the end of his message when he commits to, quote, putting together a plan for making a different and less expensive movie, end quote, which, fingers crossed, will be coming soon to an awful movie review podcast near you. Oh, yeah, baby. We sh- uh, I will actually help finance that. <laughs> <way>. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds amazing. And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Eli Bosnick, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skepticrat. Just like Christy, Amy Hernandez, Liz the Certified Financial Panther, Peter, Alex Not Jones, Dave Pearson, Heather Rose, David Zack, and JDSIU, whose virile and hearty dicks and vaginas could easily outlast a Liz Trust term. <laughs> not that they would need to be very virile or hearty. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, d d Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the Deep Web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Okay, wait, I have a question for you guys before we get started. I- I'm assuming both you guys are politically informed enough to know, you know, obviously your your congressmen and, and your senators, etc. Election coming up in um, two yep. years. Right. Sure <laughs> do. <laughs> you know both my congressmen and my senators. Z- senators. Z- yeah. Z- Z- <laughs> so- <laughs> pause for some cheese. Cheese. I love, I love, I do actually have baby bells with me in my pocket sometimes. They're great. Baby bells are fucking awesome. Debbie posted, I posted a picture of a baby bell um, one time on Facebook and said, you know, these these things should be called cheese cookies. And, yeah. and she says, oh, well, you're going to have to up your game if you want to join Cheese Cult. And I'm like, then I don't want to join fucking Cheese Cult. If Cheese Cult is too good for baby bells... I, it's too good for me. Apparently not, because Heath is fucking trying to stuff him into a parking meter. <laughs> <laughs> Heath, when you take out a baby bell out of your pocket in yeah. public, do they instantly arrest you and send you to some kind of <laughs> cholesterol-based jail? Because if they don't, the entire American <laughs> system is broken. I thought this was America. Yes. Are we not <laughs> America? Legal tender. Okay. <laughs> All debts, public and <laughs> private. The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2022. All rights.